So I want to talk to you a little bit about what slip is and about how you use it. One thing about slip is it's just clay with a lot of water added to it to make it so that you can brush it on. And this is a white slip and it has no color at all and it's just made to be white. Uh, what slip is good to be used for is you can do decorative work on your pottery or your sculpture before it gets fired using slip and that's the only thing that you can use before it gets fired and you use it on clay when it's in the leather hard stage. This is Long Beach clay and this is what I'm going to use to do some of my demonstrations on and it's about leather hard. I made these yesterday and they've set up a little bit. They're not sticky or tacky to the touch but they are still soft enough and this is really a, a ideal time for applying slip. The slip comes in a white and it also comes in different colors. Uh, the color is added to the slip by either in the form of a stain or sometimes in the form of an oxide. Uh, this is cobalt and this is blue slip but it doesn't look blue because the color in here looks like this and it's really kind of a pinky mauve color and there's a very small percentage in this blue slip so even though this, this one doesn't look blue it says blue and it actually will come out blue after it gets fired. The other slips that have a stain in them like this mazarine, this is a stain, it looks blue and when it fired you're going to get a very similar result as what you see. That's just to give you a little bit of information about what the colors are in the slip. Now I want to do a little bit of decorative work using this slip and I'll show you a few different techniques that you can use to apply different kinds of patterns and decorative Oh. For the first technique I want to show you just simply involves using a brush and using the brush stroke with the slip to create a surface decoration. Now this slip that you saw is really thick in the container and that's really much too thick for what I need so I took some of the white slip out and I added water to it, they're all water based, and I thinned it down to make the consistency that was appropriate for this particular technique. And now I'm going to brush with a stiff bristle brush and make a brush stroke kind of pattern with this slip. And I'll just hold this up so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, very simple, but what I want to show is the, the brush lines and the contrast between this dark brown clay and the white slip. And that contrast, then, when I put a glaze over it later, will create a very simple, subtle surface pattern. On this piece, I'm using a very simple stenciling technique, where I cut these shapes out of newspaper with some scissors. I laid them onto this plate form, and then I used, sprayed it with water to get these pieces of paper to stick down to the surface of the clay. Then I'm going to paint a layer of slip over this entire surface, and I'll peel the layers of paper away and I'll have no slip in this area and slip on this area so I have a simple positive negative pattern and I'm going to use white slip again in this instance to show you how to do that. So I'm going to put this here on the table. Here's my white slip and again this is pretty thin and I'm going to just a nice fluid motion. You just cover up this area, try to make sure I don't have any lumps in the slip. Try not to push any of the paper that I've set down here around too much and just give it a nice fluid coating of slip. There, that looks pretty good. And then just to show you what this is going to look like, I'll take one of these pieces, or a couple of these pieces of paper up. And you can see the kind of striped pattern that I've created here using the paper resist technique. Now there's a couple other ways that you can use resist patterns in using the slip, and I have another example of that right here. This is another piece where I used a piece of plastic 
embroidery, it simulates embroidery or lace work, and I set it down on top of the piece. like this, and I use water to just get it up tight to the surface, and then I painted the slip over it, and then when I peeled this away, uh, this was the pattern that it left behind, and for this I used a blue slip. I used the mazarine blue slip to show up in contrast to the clay background color that I'm using, which again is Long Beach, it's going to be kind of a brown color. This is a really nice example of using paper as a stencil. This was done by one of the instructors, Don Ryan. And this was an image that he cut out of newspaper. And while the pot was still leather hard like these are, he sprayed water on and got this just laid it out onto his form. And then he painted slip around the rest of the entire piece. And when it dried a little bit, he was able to peel this off. And you can literally see the dimensional quality of the slip here. Uh, and this dark clay as a background with a white on top makes for a very high contrast image. And this is another really simple and effective way to use slip in a stencil kind of technique. Just to go back over this a little bit, this is the piece that I used the newspaper to make. These are the strips of paper that I cut out. I had laid them across the surface and then I sprayed it with water to seal those strips down onto the clay and then I painted the slip over it and when I removed all the pieces of paper this is the design that I got after that. Now I want to show you one more real quick technique about using slip and for that I'm just going to paint the slip all over the surface of this plate and in this case fairly heavy and while this slip is still wet, I'm going to drag my fingers through it to create kind of a pattern. Okay, and that's another real simple way to work with slip. And one of the things that these patterns are kind of simple, but they're not necessarily the entire decoration that I'm going to have for the piece, I may add to this and start doing other things on top of this. So I sort of can use this like as an underpainting almost to build one layer of decoration and then when I put glaze on, I can continue adding to this type of surface treatment and surface work um, at each step of the process. And that's one of the things that is really nice with working with slip also is that you can have sort of an underneath layer of some kind of decoration or pattern on your work that sits below the glaze and adds an element of depth uh, to, your, to your work and it's a way to really make your work start to look more uh, professional. I've shown you a few techniques using slip for decorating and the first ones I showed you where the slip was wet. I was doing most of the work with the slip in its wet state and for this couple techniques I want to show you now, it involves letting this slip dry before you do the decorative work on it. Uh, there's two techniques I want to discuss with you, and one is called Scraffito, and the other is called Mishima, or Slip Inlay. And this is a piece I'm getting ready to work with Slip Inlay, and I've actually taken a pencil, and I've carved this series of small circles into this surface. Now I'm just using this as just a quick demonstration for you, but I'm just carving these into the plate so that I have a, a line carved in there. And then the next step for this would be to take the slip and to just coat the whole surface of this piece with the slip and make sure that you fill it in in all of the carving that you have done. Okay, and then you have to let that slip and that piece dry. Here's one that I've already worked on and you can see I've done the circles with those were the inlaid slip like I did over here. I brushed slip all over the whole thing and filled in all of the carving and marks that I made. And then you let the clay and the slip dry. And when it gets dry enough, you take a metal rib like this and very lightly scrape the surface off like this to reveal the pattern that's underneath. 
But you have to be sure that your slip and your clay is dry enough so that when you scrape it, you scrape a layer off rather than smear the pattern or the decoration around. This is really crucial to this technique and it takes a little bit of patience. So I use this metal rib and just shave this back until I reveal the pattern that I have underneath this coating of white slip. Now this is called slip inlay because I'm actually laying the slip into the recessed or the carved out areas in the clay and when I carve the layer of white slip off of the surface I get the pattern that I created underneath slowly becomes revealed and I have to scrape away until I decide how much of this pattern I want to reveal. If I scrape away too much, I'll lose what I have in there because some of this detail is very fine. But if I don't scrape off enough, it'll be kind of blurry and you won't see the crispness of the pattern either. So the scraping away part takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of a gentle touch so that you don't take off too much of your slip and smudge or smear or erase the design work that you have. So that's the pattern that I have left and I made this pattern by using this small little spindly gear very delicately and I used this and I also used a large circle and I pressed that into the clay then I took this little circle here and I pressed that in and then I used this and rolled it back and forth across the surface to leave these little tiny thin lines and it's kind of a background pattern. Okay, and that's called Mishima or slip inlay. Now the other technique is called Scraffito. And I have a couple different pieces here that show off this graffito technique. Uh, this is a picture by Scott Young, who's one of the Saddleback instructors. And you can see here, he's laid out his design. This is a black slip on top of Long Beach, which is a brown clay. And then you can see how he's drawn a design on the surface. And then he's taken a tool and scraped the slip away after it's dried. And he gets this strong contrast between the black areas and the clay areas. This is what the design looks like when it's finished. And here and here he's removed by scraping and actually sort of peeling off this layer of slip to reveal the contrasting clay color beneath it. So it starts out kind of like this and you see these lines are his drawn patterns and then you remove the areas to create the pattern and the final product. Um, Now, most of the uh, slip designs I've been showing you have been on flat pieces, and I want to show you a couple examples on a throne or an upright form. Uh, I showed you Scott's picture over there. This is a throne pot that I did, and I covered the whole thing with a white slip. And then I let it dry so that it's no longer sticky or tacky anymore. And once it's at that stage, I take a pencil that's not real sharp, and I draw in these designs. First I made the bands, and I did that by spinning it and holding the tool up against it and just created some banding here, here, and here. Then I drew these patterns in with a pencil, and not that that really matters. But then the next step is to take a tool and to carve away the background. In other words, I'm going to carve, take this area out so this is white slip and this is the natural clay color, which is a contrasting color I'm using. Long Beach clay, you can see that on the top. So I take any kind of a scraping tool, and this is a little bit soft for the scraping, but I'll just show you a little bit of how I, even though I have drawn these lines, and now that's not really that important because I'm gonna remove this. Okay, 
so I've just taken away that layer of slip and I do that in between every place where I don't have the positive mark. In other words, this shape and this shape and this shape and this shape and then this area in between each one of these shapes here and here and here. I will remove all that background slip color so that all these shapes are white and it's sitting on a background of the, the contrasting Long Beach clay which is beneath it. And it's almost like shaving. Just slowly start to remove the area around the pattern that I've created. There's many different types of ways that you can use slip, but these are just several of the ones that are more common. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple more plates here that I want to just show you a little bit more. A couple different ways to work with slip on it. And one of them is this one. This one I have a black... I've painted on a black slip on here, and I've done it with a very soft brush to 